Dave Lewis was a father of three. He loved and adored his sons. He was uh, 10 years divorced, never remarried. He was a very hard worker. He enjoyed physical labor. So we were raised with a very strong work ethic, a very strong morality ethic. Uh, if you see something wrong, speak out about it. And, and Dave was a man who spoke his mind, a very good guy. Dave lived on the summit of Dead Indian Road outside of Ashland, Oregon for 25 years. It's a magnificent, beautiful spot. He was the type of man and or neighbor who, if you needed firewood, would help deliver it. His friends called him the keeper of the mountain. We both love these mountains, you know, I mean, it's, this is God's country. Who wouldn't love living up here? Hyatt Lake is a, a magnificent, beautiful, pristine lake. It's in a special forest reserve area on the Pacific Crest Trail, and it had two sleepy little campgrounds on it that were zoned uh, special use forest reserve seasonal only campgrounds. That became overrun in 2006 when a group of uh, California developers and Donnie and uh, Bobby McNeely purchased Campers Cove, and they purchased it with a man named Leonard Foss. I didn't work at the Cove, but Dave did, and I know he voiced his opinion about that. And knowing Dave as well as I did, he would have voiced his opinion about all the property markers being moved and stuff. I know he did. You know, I would bet I'd stake my life on it, and um, I believe. Uh, um, a little bit here and a little bit there, and the final blow up is what caused the demise of Dave. If I get killed, I want you to remember this conversation. He's the only guy up here I can trust. And we believe that he saw all of this wrongdoing, confronted these resort developers who by now have sold millions of dollars worth of a mobile home type structure and that they ultimately um, were involved in his his murder and silencing him as to what the truth is. You know he was standing up for what he believed in and that's what I liked about him so much. He would stand up for what he believed in and he believed they were doing something wrong. I don't know exactly the last thing that broke the camel's back, but there was something in, in that chain of events over the last uh, six months of Dave's life where he complained enough to certain people about things that were going on. And maybe, I don't know, but maybe Dave even said, you know what, I'm gonna turn you all in as regards what happened. Now, whether that got him you know, his demise, I don't know. But it wouldn't surprise me one bit. When they were red tagged, and rightly so, and told to stop building, Bobby told them to go out back and keep building. And Dave laid down his tools and he said, this is wrong, we need to go, we need to leave. And there was great despair for David at that point with his coworkers because they continued to work and David was the one who left. But he said it got ugly, that Bob just exploded. The argument had really escalated and that Bob had actually threatened Dave's life. He was told that he would be burnt out. I just told him, hey, be careful, you know, and that was the last time I see Dave alive.
When I got there, there were several fire trucks already there. The fire chief stopped me from going in there because he knew Dave was my friend and told me it's, it's pretty bad, you know. And, and I knew something was wrong because I've never seen Dave scatter tools over his yard. You know, his fishing pole was just thrown on the ground and that would have never happened. I don't know why they did it, but somebody tried to make it look like uh, maybe it was a robbery or something. They tried to disguise it somehow that there was something other than just a plain old murder. And there's people that live here that know what happened to him, but won't own up to it, that know what happened to Dave. There is something, some connection between what happened and to the sheriff. Um, I'm not saying he did it or knew what did it even, but I believe that one of the people really closely involved that's really influential up here at one time was is friends with Mike Winters, and they were very close friends. So I think that's where the breakdown in um, anybody wanting to pursue it eagerly trying to find out what happened to this person. Losing a good friend is, um, is hard in itself. But to have somebody shoot my friend and then burn his body beyond recognition, um, I'm, I don't think I'll ever get over that. And I do miss him, he was my friend and I miss him.